In the last video, I talked about how to store the DC component, this upper left entry. So the next question is, is how do I store the rest of the matrix, what we call the AC components? Well, the first thing to realize is that because the entries tend to be clustered, non-zero entries, I should say, tend to be clustered up toward the upper left, it makes sense to sort of start and focus on the upper left kind of stuff. And the way we do this then is that rather than going left to right across the matrix or top to bottom, we use diagonals. It's actually very similar to the way a Cantor diagonalization argument works. We're going to go ahead and say the first thing I'm going to code is this one right here. Then I'm going to go down along that diagonal. The next one would be that. Then I move down. The next thing coded would be this one. And then we go up that diagonal. Then I move over to the right and down that diagonal. Down and up and so on throughout the whole matrix. In this case, we do that until we get... all the way to here and then we would say okay everything from there on is zeros we give it a special code to understand that and then we're done so how do we go ahead and code all these numbers efficiently well we do something which we call run length encoding and what, so what it does is it stores not just numbers, but it actually stores ordered, ordered pairs. Where the first part of the ordered pair is the number of zeros in between where you are and the next non-zero entry. Then the second one encodes the length of that non-zero entry, just like we did for the DC component. After we encode that ordered pair, it knows, hey, I've got this many zeros to fill into the matrix, and then it knows how long the next number is going to be, and so it knows that the next few bits are going to be the specific number. We code the specific bits for the number exactly like we did for the DC component, but to get those ordered pairs, there's a big, ugly tree kind of like this. Now, it's worth noting that this tree does go on beyond this. There's other ones that can come up. However, like all Huffman coding, it, this sort of means that the most commonly occurring things are the easiest to encode. The ones that I've got on here should be the ones that show up the most. So, Going back to our thing here, how do I start encoding this? We've already said before that from the DC video that the encoding starts out here as a 100 telling us that we need three bits to encode the DC component. And then the specific number for the DC component was the 101. Now, going through this, since we're starting here, we know that there are going to be zero things that before, uh, zero zeros before the next number. And to encode a one, we know we need one bit using this length formula. So I'm just going to put in the ordered pairs for now, and then we'll go to the tree to figure these things out. So 0, 1, then we're going to need the specific bits for a 1. For next, from here to here, there's 0, zeros before the next. To encode a 2 is going to need 2 bits. Then we need the specific code for a 2. Again, zero zeros. It takes one bit to encode a negative one. 
So the next specific number is a negative 1. Now, from here to here, though, now we got a 0 in between. There's one 0 in between, 1 bit to encode a 1. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. before 1 bit to encode a negative 1. No zeros, 1 bit to encode a positive 1. 3 zeros, 1 bit to encode a negative 1. 1, 2, 3 more zeros. one bit to encode a one and then after that everything else is zeros so I actually had that in my tree and I probably should have mentioned it the EOB is the end of block that's saying that everything from there on is all zeros okay so how does this come out Well, okay, we have the 100101 from the DC component. We need to code a 01 was the first part here. 01 is left left, so 00. zero. To code a 1, I'm not going to pull this out every time, but to code a 1 was a binary 1, since it knows it has only one bit. 0, 2 needs to be encoded next. 0, 2 is a 0, 1 to get there. And then a 2 is a 1, 0. Another zero one is a zero zero on our tree. A negative one is a zero. One one is all the way over here. So that's a one one zero zero to get there. Encoding a one was one. A five one is way down here. A one 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 zero one zero. So that was one two three four ones zero one zero. So then code a negative one which is a zero. A zero one is again a zero zero. Encoding a one is a one. A three one is one 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 one. Sorry, one 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 zero one zero. Then it encodes a negative one is a zero. Another three one, one one one, zero one zero, positive one, and then the end of block is a one zero one zero. Okay, certainly cranking through this bit stream is hard for us to do. But it can be done. I mean, we could take this thing and translate it back. But the big thing to realize here is that we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 3, 36, 38, 39, 42, 45, 48, 50 bits.
assuming I counted that right. There's only 50 bits to store what was originally in this thing, eight entries by eight entries by uh, eight bits per entry, before it was 512 bits to store that. We've compressed this thing by more than a factor of 10. This is huge. We get a huge amount of compression by doing all these tricks.